In this video, we will cover how to avoid a common mistake in conclusion drawing questions. What is that mistake, I hear you ask? The mistake is to assume that because all x belong to group y, then all of group y must be x. Our objectives over the next few minutes are to ensure you fully understand the all x in group y error and demonstrate how this will be tested in the UCAT. First, let me clarify what this mistake is. If I told you that all the boys in one class choose to play rugby one morning, you might then assume that the rugby team that morning was made up entirely of boys. But that would be committing the all x in group y error. Just because every boy went to play rugby, it doesn't mean that everyone playing rugby was a boy from that class. There could be boys from other classes or girls playing rugby that morning as well. This error can be demonstrated in other ways. Imagine you were told that all the adults in a room wore a blue badge, and then were told that Tanya wore a blue badge. It would be tempting to conclude that Tanya must be an adult, right? This would be making the same error. Even though we're told that every adult wore a blue badge, we are not told that only adults wore blue badges. Tanya could be a child wearing a blue badge. This is the kind of error that a conclusion drawing question will tempt you to make. Are you ready to test your ability to avoid this error with a full-size conclusion drawing question? Let's go through the answers to these questions. Question 1.1. The answer is no. The conclusion that Asia, who is a unionised employee, works at store A, is not justified. Just because 1. All employees at store A are unionised and 2. Asia is a unionised employee, it does not follow that Asia works at store A. Question 1.2. The answer is no. The conclusion that Catherine works as the cleaner in store A is not justified. Just because 1. All cleaners in store A are paid minimum wage and 2. Catherine works at store A and is paid the minimum wage, it does not follow that Catherine is a cleaner there. She could have another job paying minimum wage at store A. Question 1.3. The answer is yes. The conclusion that Shanice is a unionised employee is justified because Shanice is employed at store A and all employees at store A are unionised. Question 1.4. The answer is no. The conclusion that Matthew, who is not on minimum wage, is a sales clerk in store B and will be paid more per hour than Catherine, even if she does work overtime, is not justified. If Catherine does overtime, she will receive 1.5 times pay for those hours. While we do know that Matthew is paid more than the minimum wage, we do not know that he is paid more than 1.5 times the minimum wage. Question 1.5. The answer is no. The conclusion that Jason, a sales advisor at store B, will be paid more per hour than Jasmine, who is the cleaner at the same store, is not justified. We know that Jasmine will be paid the minimum wage, but we do not know that a sales advisor will be paid more than the minimum wage. Just because all cleaners are paid the minimum wage, it doesn't follow that all those on minimum wage are cleaners. We hope that we have thoroughly demonstrated how to avoid making the all X in group Y error. It's a common error in life as well as in the UCAT, so we trust that you will remember what you have watched here for a very long time. Failing that long enough for you to score amazingly on the test. Good luck. That concludes another UCAT lesson. 
If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAC questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.